Hi Cancer, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your March 16th to the 31st, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. So let's dive right in now, Cancer, and see what this time frame has in store for you. I'm going to be starting with your Spirit Guide Animal Cards. These are going to be your totem animals for this time. So if you see these animals in the wild or an image of them, this is Spirit, your angels, really tapping you on the shoulder and saying, remember this message. So let's see here. Cancer, March 16th to the 31st, 2020 Cancer. March 16th to the 31st, 2020 Cancer. March 16th to the 31st, 2020 Cancer. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. So we have the Nightingale Spirit, which says love is all around you, which is absolutely beautiful. And the Groundhog Spirit says time to let go. So it's time to let go because love is all around you. And that's such a freeing and empowering statement. Now your chakra cards. Cancer, March 16th to the 31st, 2020 Cancer. March 16th to the 31st, 2020 Cancer. March 16th to the 31st, 2020, Cancer. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Oh, goodness. Okay. So these two that came on top, listening and personal power. Oh, I love that. So you have the throat chakra and the solar plexus chakra are really shining bright here. So listening to the words that are being spoken, listening to what spirit is saying to you, what your angels are saying, and then embracing your personal power. You're seeing yourself in a new light, a more self-assured, more empowered light here, Cancer. Angel and spirit guide message for Cancer, March 16th to the 31st, 2020. Angel and spirit guide message for Cancer, March 16th to the 31st, 2020. Show me clearly. Show me clearly. At the center of everything, we have the Princess of Swords. This is an air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius. You then are crowned by the magician. Oh, I love that. I love that. You then have the princess of wands, a fire sign and air, a fire sign energy. There we go. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The 10 of swords. The prince of swords. Oh, I love that combination. The prince and the princess here. The ace of cups. This is a gift for you. Cancer, most definitely. You are a water sign, so you are represented by the cups in the minor arcana. So this is really a gift just for you. And you are most definitely taking it because you have the magician here. Know that this can be a highly emotional time for you. Just be mindful of that. And then you have rebirth. This is the judgment card. This is your angels being right there with you. This is going to be an emotional time. You have the sun right here. Oh, I love that. The Eight of Swords, okay, you will have a tendency to be way too much in your own head. Be mindful of that. And then we have the Ten of Wands. You have the repeat of the number 10. You are coming to a completion of a cycle. You're going to be much more comfortable being behind the scenes because you have the princesses here. You are also learning a lot during this time because you have the prince, you have the princesses. So this isn't the king or the queen. This isn't full maturity. There is a sense of learning, understanding, comprehending, but you are really walking into a powerful situation when it comes to your mind, when it comes to your focus. Yeah. All right. So let's start with the nightingale and with the groundhog spirit. So the nightingale spirit says love is all around. So love is all around. It's all around you. And it's really embracing and harnessing this love during this time. And it leads you to the groundhog spirit, which says time to let go. It's time to embrace love and let go of negativity, hardships, pains, 
disappointments that you could be carrying with you for a decade, you know, for some. For others, it's you need to let go in order to embrace a new wealth and a new power because you've been bent down by something, something you've been carrying with you for so long, it's become too much. And as you let it go, you rise. And then we have here listening. So with the throat chakra, so when we think of the throat chakra, we think of speaking, right? But it's all about communication and listening is just as important as speaking. So here it is knowing that everybody comes to the table with different definitions, different words, different backgrounds, different upbringings. So when we say something to one person, they might hear it in a completely different way or in a way we didn't intend it. So listening is going to be very important because I can see here there's a sense of a, a stumbling with words, even though we've come out of Mercury retrograde, right? And you're really embracing your power, you're knowing your truth, there is still here just a sense of making sure that you listen, making sure that you are listening to the conversation or to what people are saying, and also that people are listening to you, right? You'll be able to really sense and feel when somebody isn't truly being connected with what you're saying. Okay, Cancer, and that is not going to be something that you enjoy the feeling of, but it's going to be very empowering and very, you know, good for you to be aware of it because you're walking into your personal power, really listening to your gut, having a, a gut reaction to things, moving you forward, moving you forward to what you desire, moving you forward to what you want, right? Your personal power is saying, listen to your heart, your soul, yourself. Also, really listen to your angels and your spirit guides during this time because you are going to be moving forward in your power, in your purpose, in what you desire. Your personal power is going to be lighting you forward. And as you do so, we have at the heart right here, the princess of swords. Now, the princess of swords is a discoverer. Just as, and I'm going to pair these two together because this is really powerful. Having the king and the queen of the same suit in the same deck means a soulmate connection. Now in this deck, you have princes and princesses. So instead of pages and, and knights, you have princes and princesses. So it is the same thing. It's that soulmate connection. It's that true love connection that's moving you forward. It's that coming into your own. But it's not as fully developed as the king and the queen. So here, when it comes to communication, when it comes to your mind, when it comes to your throat chakra, this is going to be very powerful stuff for you, okay? Your words, the words that you say to yourself, the words that you say to others, right? The way that you talk to yourself when nobody's around, those are going to have a tremendous impact. And part of you, your heart, is going to be, let's learn, let's discover, let's look at things anew, let's figure it out. And then at your roots, you're going to be like, let's move. I need to move forward. I need to go into action. I need to just go forward because that's where my prosperity, my bounty is going to be. It's going to be through action. So you're going to need to find a balance between these two things because at your root, you're going to say to defend, to be who I am and move forward the way that I want to. You're going to feel as if you have to defend it, Cancer. And the fact of the matter is you don't. You don't have to defend it the way that you're seeing right? Or the way that you'll feel instantaneously. It'll be a gut reaction to be like, no, I can move forward. It's kind of like might over right kind of thing. And you're going to go with might. But to do what is right, you're going to need to step back and look at the weight that you've been carrying. Look at the burdens that have been laying you down, right? Because there's something here where it's like enough is enough. And I love it that it's the wands and it's the swords. And those are the court cards that you have here, wands and swords. So at your heart, you're really thinking about a lot of things. You're discovering, you're learning, you're understanding, you're embracing a new dawn, right? Air sign energy also is to the east. So sunrises, new days, that's really what you're going to be looking at. You're always going to be rather excited about a new day or new opportunities or looking at the bright future. But here with the Eight of Swords, this is getting way too much in your own head. This is sitting there doubting yourself, fearing, feeling overwhelmed, going, can I do this? And thinking, you know what? No, I can't. The fact of the matter is, is that the Eight of Swords is a lie. The Eight of Swords is the lie that we tell ourselves to keep us small. It is the lie that the world tells us to keep us from moving forward the way that we want to, the way that we need to. Because here she's blindfolded, she's bound. And I can only imagine in the narrative of this, of this card in my head, it's like, no matter which way you turn, you will be cut. There is no escape. There is no happiness. There is only exhaustion as you stand in fear. And isn't that what fear does to us? It brings us exhaustion. It makes us feel like we cannot move forward. 
It makes us feel overwhelmed. It makes us feel bound to the same spot, the same narrative playing in our heads over and over and over again, the same power that somebody once had over us, an emotion, a feeling. It stays with us and it bounds us to that one place. And here with the Princess of Swords, it's like, no, no more. I'm learning my power. I'm gaining my understanding. I'm seeing my truth and I am moving forward in it. There is nothing and no one who will stop me, who will hinder me, except yourself. So be very mindful. Again, the throat chakra, listen to what you are saying to yourself. Listen to the way that you are interpreting other people's words. Because there's something here, and it comes from the past. It comes from something that you've worked really hard to overcome, to move past, right? And this is like, it comes up, and you sit there, and you're like, what the heck? I thought I was over this. But that's the thing with scars. You know, it's kind of like when you break a bone. And you know how, if you break a bone, that it aches sometime. And you're sitting there and you're like, why does that, like, I, I broke one of my ankles once. I'm like, why does that ankle hurt and not the other one? And I'm like, oh yeah, I broke that one. And that's what the scars do. The emotional scars. It's like, why does that hurt? Why can other people move forward, you know, just so easily in that scenario? But I, I stumble. I fall. I feel like I fail. It's because of the scars that we carry from this life, from past lives. Okay, it can't be within our DNA where you, look, where you look back at your family history and you say, well, we have a pattern. You know, it can be the oldest girl always has this pattern and the oldest boy always has this pattern and the youngest always has this pattern. You know, that type of thing, the things that we see and we sit there and we go, oh, wow, that's just truth. Or I can't be happy. Nobody in my family is ever happy. The marriage is, you're, you're married, you're married forever, you know, but you'll just sit there in misery, you know? You're like, no. No, now it's time to break free. Now it's time to move forward. Now it's time to be more because you've worked so hard for it and the mind is just a tricky thing. So know here that there will be that self-doubt, that sense of, oh my gosh, I can't. And it will feel overwhelming. This triangle right here is kind of an overwhelming triangle with the base being the Ten of Wands and then you have the Eight of Swords. And at the tip, you have the Ten of Swords. It's like you're carrying a lot and it makes you feel frozen. But you actually have a tremendous wealth, which I will get to in a moment. The Magician. This is standing before the altar of your existence. This is claiming your power. I mean, here he's in Stonehenge and he's claiming his power. He's doing his ritual. So you have here the wand in the hand, you know, to mark creation. You have the cup, the sword, and the pentacle. You are definitely claiming the Ace of Cups, this prosperity, this abundance. And then we have the Sun card. So as you claim your power, as you claim your truth, you walk into blessings. Now with the Sun card, it's the happiest card in the whole entire deck. But do note that when people see you radiating this happiness, okay, they get jealous. And they kind of want to take you by eyes. right? They want to have that happiness that you have. And a lot of people sit there and think, okay, if you're happy... That means there's less happiness in the world for me. So I'm going to take it from you. This isn't me saying, oh, I don't want to say anything positive, right? This is me being really honest with you guys. So here with, this, with the sun card, there's a sense of bounty and of beauty, of power and of truth, okay? And there's a sense that people's eyes turn towards you. Why you're the magician? You can speak into reality what you want, what you focus on, what you invest your time and your effort in, becomes your reality, becomes your truth, becomes part of your magic. And your magic isn't just conjuring magic. If that's what you're into, then this is a heightened sense of it. But this is also the magic of your soul, the God's head that lies within. Okay, Having stardust running through your veins, being part of something so much greater and so much more. And this leads you to the sun. It leads you to happiness. It leads you to kind of like a second childhood, where you're coming in there and you're being like, yes, this is what I love. This is what I want. This is who I am. A celebration and a beauty. A joy and a rapture. A sense of happiness. And a sense of finally being happy. And you might say, Dane, I'm happy. But is it that deep down happiness? That contented, peaceful happiness? Because that's what we're searching for. That's what so many people search for and seek. And here, we have you charging forward with the Prince of Wands. It's like, I'm going to get it. 
Your mind, Cancer, your mind is on fire. You have insights, you have understandings, you have this unique and beautiful way of doing things. But you're also going to have this sense of wanting to act, of wanting just to charge for it. And what I'm really seeing here is that you're going to really succeed if you step back, look at things, open and honest with yourself about the way you want to proceed, and then you go for it. Because the Ten of Wands is like it's time to put down the burdens that you've been carrying, but also not carrying everybody else's burdens, not carrying the weight of everyone else and everything else. So with the Ten of Wands, there is the sense of moving forward towards your power and your truth, moving forward towards your prosperity. You've been carrying so much for so long that if you put down the weight of it, you might sit there and be like, ooh, it's kind of like if you have really long hair, if you can relate to this, but, and you cut your hair and you're like, oh my gosh, my head feels so light. You know, it's kind of like that. It's like, wow, I didn't know I was carrying around that much of a burden, that much of a weight. And you're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel more empowered. You're going to feel beautiful. You actually are going to feel beautiful as you move forward or handsome, if that's a word you prefer. And as you move forward, there's going to be a sense of clarity of like, this is what I want, this is what I need, this is what I'm going for. And as you go for it, okay, make sure you step back, make sure you think things through, because you, because you don't want to be too hasty. With the Prince uh, of Swords, there is this sense of you can get caught up in, in the ideal of it all, you know, not the truth, but the ideal, how it should be. And here with the Ten of Wands, as you look at the burdens that you've been carrying, as you put them down, and as you say to other people, you know what, you have to carry your burden. I have to carry mine. And that's how life is. Not sitting there and saying, oh, I'll, I'll carry you too, and I'll carry you. And it's not letting go of your responsibilities. I'm a firm believer in responsibilities, right? But it is a sense here of saying, I need to move forward as me. And not weighed down, kind of like Atlas, weighed down, carrying the world. So as you move forward, as you let go of the weight of the world upon your shoulders, and you see what you need to focus on, and you look at your truth, God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, hands you a gift of healing, beautiful love. It's a detox. It's a cleanse. It's healing waters washing over you. It's a very emotional time. It really is. And it leads you to the Ten of Swords. Now, the Ten of Swords is the darkness before the dawn. The Ten of Swords is also feeling like overkill, feeling like, you know what, I just can't do anything right. Why do I even try? But here's a way that the Ten of Swords has struck me recently. Okay, you're looking at this guy. He's dead. He's beyond the realms of dead. He has ten swords in him. That's overkill. So it can be looking at a situation and looking at it kind of like with overkill eyes. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so terrible. Being very dramatic about it all. But you also hold a wealth. Okay, this guy holds a wealth in his back. Every hardship, every pain, every disappointment, every despair, every time you've been stabbed in the back, hurt. You know, every time you thought, oh wow, I can trust you, and it fell apart. The Ten of Swords is saying, that has given you wealth. And you might sit there and say, Dane, you lost it. Okay? This isn't wealth. This is horrible. This is making it hard to breathe. But once you step back and you look at yourself, you look at what you want from life, and then you look at how strong you have become. You haven't fallen down. You're not dead. Because remember, in medieval times, in ancient times, okay, because this is, this is back a ways in history, when when a battle was over, the victor would go and clear out the battlefield, okay? They would sometimes offer death strokes to those people who were dying, all right? But they would also take the weapons because they were valuable. This is hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours of smithing right there. You know, if these are really, really, really good swords, they wouldn't just be left behind. And so... When you look at everything that you've been through, when you look at the darkness and you're looking at the dawn, okay, because you have, directionally, you have east and you have west coming forward. As you're looking at things, 
realize that everything that you have been through has actually added to your richness. It might not have added to the coffers. Your bank account might not be growing as quickly as you would like it to. But it is adding to your richness, your power, your prosperity, your truth, your personage. And as you move forward, you're going to see that you now have more answers to you, more power to you, more assurity to you than you had realized before or that you had expected. And this moves you to looking at the fear that you once stood in and the weight that you once carried and saying, do I want this? And you know what you are. You are reborn. There's a rebirth. Now I forget the name of this of this tomb because what happens is the sun goes in right up here and it illuminates on the solstice. So here, there's this rebirth and there's this heralding in a new age. And both with the sun and with the rebirth card, which is the justice card in the Rider Waite Smith deck, you have a child. So here, there's a sense of an innocent joy of rebirth. You have princes and you have princesses. You have a prince and you have princesses. A rebirth. Not a yeah, a rebirth of self, but a also an embracing of joy, of not looking at everything as kind of as serious as a king or a queen, as life or death. And here, as you are reborn, you again step into your magic. You are heralding in a new age. You are blessed. You are powerful. And you move forward to the Princess of Wands. And the Princess of Wands is passion and creativity. It's discovery and determination. It's a surety. Here, where the Princess of Swords studies, she looks at her sword. And what's interesting is she's not even holding it by the hilt. She's holding it by the blade, which seems rather dangerous. So there's the sense of study and understanding and not using knowledge as a weapon, okay? But gathering knowledge for the sake of knowledge. You might find yourself very drawn to learning comprehending, enriching yourself in the ways that are valuable to you. This then moves you to the princess of wands, passion and creativity and determination. With air sign energy, it's intelligence and clear thinking. With water sign, no, this isn't water sign, this isn't west, this is south. I do apologize. I think I said this is east and west. This is, this is east and this is south. This is being dynamic and intuitive and a visionary. Okay, this is, you know, sitting there and having that adventure, adventurous spirit moving you forward. And as you look at things, as you gain an understanding, you know, you might find that you actually run into a bit of difficulty with air sign energies, Gemini, Libra, Aquariuses, and fire sign energies, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, right? And that's because here you are alleviating a weight from your shoulders. You have come to an end of a cycle. And here with the Eight of Swords, you are leaving a sense of doubt and of fear and of being overwhelmed. And as you embrace your passion, right, as you step into your new dawn, you celebrate yourself. But as you celebrate yourself, there's going to be a part of you that's like, when's the next shoe going to drop? When is everything going to fall apart? And Spirit is saying here, step back and breathe. Because you really are on a beautiful journey and you really are at a beautiful it's almost like a crossroads of your life where you purge away the negative you embrace the positive and you're starting to see yourself in a new light this is a highly emotional time for you but it's a highly inspiring time for you it's a time where you make the tough calls or you're really open and kind of brutally honest with yourself and it's like it's either now or it's never. And with the personal power that you have and the ability to listen to your heart, your soul, yourself, what people are truly saying, okay, but also your angels and your spirit guides and your connection with the divine, you can find yourself seeing that love surrounds you. And then you let go. You let go of the negative. You end that cycle. And you are reborn. Now your subconscious message is the Hermit. This is a Virgo energy, a time frame of August 23rd to September 22nd. You are guided by your inner light. You are 
protected by this wolf, this dog right there, you're looking out over the waters. Okay? So you're looking out over your emotions. And you're saying, how do I move forward? Where do I stand? What do I want? Who am I? And this is a time where, again, you'll feel much more comfortable behind the scenes, connected with your soul and yourself. Okay? This is a time of introspection. This is a time of discovery. This is a time of empowerment. And as you look within, you're going to see answers come. But you're also really going to be embracing the Ace of Cups, this healing, this cleansing, this release. And as you do so, your subconscious, yeah, chakra message is clarity. This is the third eye chakra. You're going to see things in greater clarity, in greater, in greater light, in greater understanding. But also clarity is going to be important to you, really understanding things, kind of getting to the nitty gritty of it all. Not the nitty gritty. No, it is the nitty gritty. It's kind of like you are not going to be okay with just surface values of things. You're like, listen, I don't want your, you know, hollow words. I want something deeper. I want something more for my life. And if that means you really look at people and say, you know what, I'm letting go of this and I'm letting go of that and I'm not going to do that anymore so that what you do is really meaningful. Now, this doesn't say, this isn't saying that if you have a job and it's not what you love, that you just leave, okay? This is saying that you set things up to have that meaningfulness and you really look at yourself and your life and who it is that you are and what it is that you want, Cancer. And you say, you know what, I deserve this. I deserve happiness. I deserve bliss. I deserve to see my power because other people are seeing it. And there are going to be times here in Cancer where the real goal is for you to see it too. Because if you don't see it, you'll never live it. And your subconscious spirit animal message, your totem animal, starfish, says open to infinite possibilities. Be open to infinite possibilities. Because there is a truth that is guiding you forward. There is a power and a purpose and a understanding that is leading you towards absolute greatness and absolute prosperity. All right, Cancer. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. And I love you all. Bye.